episode 168 of the Park Run Adventurers. Surprise, everybody. It's Lyndall and I'm back. Um, back co-hosting the Park Run Adventurers. And you might be wondering why. Well, or maybe not. Scotty's been talking a little bit and dreaming or something about not being the, po- the co-host anymore and whether he could find a replacement. Um... So, here I am, and I'm joined by Mel Erbacher. Mel, how are you going tonight? I'm really well, thanks, Lyndall, a.k.a. Um, the new Scotty. Or you're the new Scotty, or I'm the new Scotty. How would you like to play this? Well, well, I don't know. I think there was a poll about who was the funniest one, and I, I mean, you pipped him at the post on that, and you're the funny one. Yeah, but see, the thing is, we. I think you're probably funnier than I am. So you could be the new Mel in that respect. You're you're the funny one, and maybe I need to just tone it back and talk talk slower, uh, more deliberately, possibly with a lower register. If I can ma- lower register, I don't. <laughs> Is is that gonna? I don't know. That that's not gonna work, is it? <laughs> I can oh, already no. tell that's not that's gonna probably work. Probably not gonna work. Maybe um, we should just be ourselves. We well, we could try that. We could no, see maybe, how that goes. Maybe we could both be the funny ones. Oh, I don't know if the podcast could handle that much funny, Lyndall. Oh, well, this, I'm not this... that funny, so <laughs> <laughs> I disagree. I disagree. <laughs> your your original. Um, the the actual roving report that got you onto the team where you know you went and interviewed people who had never heard of parkrun before that that was that was a moment in parkrun adventurous history that i will never forget <laughs> it was brilliant and well, um, it was fun yeah <laughs> it gave me a good laugh anyway and i know we got great feedback about that one so uh, yeah I think we're both funny. I think we're both the funny one. Um, so, so let's we're see if the listeners can handle it. Let's see. Let's see. Let's now, see. I'm, I'm very happy to have you join me this week. Uh, it's, it's, it is very sad that um, Scotty has decided to step away from podcasting, but we're not going to dwell on that. We're just going to move forward in a positive way and. Um, See where the podcast goes. It could go all over the place. Who knows? It might the, be a whole chaos. new direction. It might be chaos without Scotty. <laughs> let's see what fun we can have. Uh, let, let's start with, Lyndall, where were you last Parkrun Day? I was at Nambour Parkrun, Mel. Um, I followed in your tracks and went to a spy and meet the elusive Fluffy, who turns out to be not that elusive. No, he's a bit of a media tart, isn't he? Sure is. He just Loving the people, along. I think. Oh, I think so. Well, and how was it? Did you did you get to? Obviously, he's not so elusive. That kind of indicates to me that he was there. He showed he, up this week. Yeah, he sure was. And you know how at Noosa at Noosa at Nambour, where you everybody walks to the start line. Yep. Yeah, Fluffy just joined in and walked along to the start line with us. And, nice. You know, was he at the pre-run brief this week? Well, he was not at the pre-run brief, so um, I think he might have got lost and probably didn't get a finisher token. <laughs> so I don't know whether he completed the course. <laughs> he got a PB the week before, I hear. So, um, yeah. Makes his own rules, does Fluffy, I believe. Oh, look, he's, a, he's an emu of his own um, own devices, I think. <laughs> and has up, got him. he does, and he's got quite the cult following now as well. You know, people are traveling interstate to uh, park run at Nambour just so they can hopefully meet Fluffy. Um, the the um, famous emu aside, how did you enjoy Nambour Park Run this time? You've been there before, but you know it's always good to go for another hit out on familiar courses. Yeah, I it was great. Look, I loved it. Um, I, what I loved most about going back to Nambour was that um, the I got to run it this time. The first time I went, um, I accompanied my friend's kids 
And so we walked through the bush and we had a lovely time. It was lots of fun. Um, but this time I got to have a run and I haven't been running on the trails too much um, and um, I've really missed it. And this weekend really showed me how much I missed running on trails and, yeah, it left a little warm spot in my heart and I Eve, to, to, to the point where I think I'm going to add Nambour as one of my P index runs Ooh. and um, get back there, try and get back there a little bit more regularly. Okay, so what is your P index up to at the moment? Uh, I'm on five at the moment, Mel. Okay. Um, and only three runs away from seven. Ooh. Three runs, no, three, four, three runs on one event away from seven? Hold on. Four runs away from seven. I need to get one more at – no, I'm, I, my maths is terrible. Oh, see, I this is I why you're the perfect away. new me. <laughs> <laughs> I think I might be five away. So to get to six, I need to do one more at one event. And okay. Then and then four more at, at another four. event. So gotcha. then I have to get – well, I have to get the one that I'm going to the sixth time up to seven. So that's one. And yet – oh, and, and so I've got does... another four. So it is four, four events away. Gee, that was a really boring part of the podcast, me trying to figure out – how to get oh, to seven. No, look, I'm <laughs> I, I'm doing this with the maths all the time. Everybody's used to it. Don't worry. <laughs> um, so is is Namble one of those, or Namble will be like the next event that will get you to eight, and you'll have to go back there six more times. So now, yes, I've only done Namble twice, but what I'm starting to do is, um, I'm I'm running out of events that I've got more than two. So I'm yep. looking at the events that I've done twice and thinking, okay, which are the ones that are either – This is the time where you choose yeah, who's going to be or, the next P index contributor. Yes. Which ones do I want to start building up over time to be the next contributor to my P index? Oh, that's exciting. See, because we haven't had a lot of new launches in Queensland lately. There's not a lot on the board coming up as well. So I guess that leaves the uh, adventure – landscape open for people to try and choose a different running challenge to pursue for a little while and you know if if the new events thing isn't something that they're clocking up even if people don't attend the launches and wait for a little bit longer this is I mean it's creating a problem for me because my Wilson index I, I need four event number four and five and we don't have any launches coming up so the prospects for me being able to do those are are way off into the future. So I'm yes. playing the long game with my Wilson index at the moment and going for numbers that are up in the 200s and things like that. If I haven't already <laughs> got it, basically, and it's it's up there in those numbers, then I, I try to strategically attend those ones. But uh, it's been few and far between for me as well. And um, I like I like that you're choosing Nambour as a P index. Was it plan B or plan A? Have you only run plan A twice? I believe so. Okay, so yes. that's the loop. It's the big circuit. Yeah, yeah. I've done that twice. Yeah, which yeah. is the official course, but when they have wet weather, um, the contingency, you don't cross the, the creek. So you turn around yeah. before you get to the creek and come back and you go up those really nasty hills again, which uh, turns a difficult course into one with even extra elevation. So maybe you'll be lucky enough to experience a plan B among your – P index endeavors in the future. Yeah, maybe I will. So Mel, where were you on the weekend? I um I got a new event in. I I've got back. Not that it matters anymore because he's not co-hosting, but I think I'm I'm going to maintain this competition anyway. Uh, Scotty and I are now equal again on the Australian Most Events list. He's technically still ahead of me by two events uh, because he's got two more international events than I do. But I got a new event in. I went to my, would you call it a penultimate Nendi if it's the event that's the second closest to you that you haven't yet done? Um, well, why do I look at them? I call them Nendi and then Nendi 2, Nendi 3, Nendi 4. Oh, okay. That's probably a lot more logical. <laughs> I don't know whether it does. <laughs> so, 
Well, maybe it's the Snendy, the second nearest event. Not yet. Not not done yet. The Snendy. I reckon Snendy's a winner. And then the Tenendi? No, that's not going to work. Tenendi. <laughs> or the <laughs> Threnendi. The Thernendi? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Let's not create any new words. Obviously, it's a bit too late in the evening to um, come up with anything intelligent. At any rate, Baringa Park Run on the Sunshine Coast was my Snendi. And I went along to do that one. It's actually. Um, we tried, we tried, or we had intentions of getting there last week, um, which didn't happen as everyone yes. who listens to the podcast knows that we just didn't get out of bed. Uh, so this, this was our second attempt to get along to Baringa and we made it, which I was very happy about because it's always good to get along and have an adventure. It's my first one since Emmett has been born and my first one since oh months before he was born actually you know it's been a, a long time between adventures for me possibly my longest drought that's got to be a thing your adventure drought I know there's a lot of people who are counting the the list of them in a row but this is the longest time I think Without. since I started adventuring that I haven't been to a new event so wow. drought is broken that fantastic could, yes uh, I was very excited by that and uh, great course. It was, I, I came 48 out of, I think, 50 participants, which is totally fine. Um, but it, lovely, lovely to have such a small community as well. You know, it's it's still in its early stages. I think you've, you've been to Baringa. You possibly even gave no. us a roving. No? No, I've not been to Baringa. Oh, okay. I'm sure we it's had a roving report from there. Perhaps Dave yeah. sent that one in. Maybe. I should I should do more research about what's on my own podcast. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but don't worry about that. <laughs> it, it's a great it's a great little course. It's got um, multi terrain, so you start on an oval, which is all grassy, and then it moves for a short period onto sealed concrete path before it goes onto like a, a service road, which is uh, compacted gravel, and then the service road goes for oh, perhaps. Three or four hundred meters, maybe half a k, um, before it goes back onto sealed paths all through the estate, and they they wind around. It was very well signed. Uh, they had chalk arrows everywhere that you needed to turn. Possibly, uh, if you were fast, you might miss them, but I I had no trouble following the course. <laughs> and um, beautiful morning, very friendly tail runner. Um, on the morning, which was great too. It's it's always Fantastic. nice to have good support on the course and, and not to feel too bad, you know. I was pushing Emmett. So it was Emmett's first park run. He is now on on the unofficial board because obviously he couldn't scan in. But he's done a full yeah. course. He's not just a volunteer at park run anymore. So that was well, a special well done, Emmett. Yeah, that was a special moment as well. He's he's sure. finally been indoctrinated into the whole park run scene. So we had a great morning at the cafe afterwards. Oh my goodness, we had the best breakfast. Um, yes. Yeah. Highly, highly rate the cafe. So if you're in Baringa, um, let me know and I'll let you know what the cafe's called. I, think, I, I have trouble pronouncing it, so I'd probably have to send people a link. Um, <laughs> but awesome, awesome breakfast and a great park as well for the kids to play. And, great and park. the, um, the actual eating area overlooks the park. So you can kind of sit down and relax and you don't have to go and, um, actually be in the park. I mean, technically you're supposed to be supervising your two year old child who doesn't know how to climb things yet. <laughs> but <laughs> you know, that's, that's neither here nor there really. But we had a great morning, which was good. And, um, didn't contribute towards my Wilson index in the end, I don't believe. So it pretty much running challenges wise, all it contributed to was a, a brand new event. I knew when I was coming in toward the finish line that I was not going to get one of my final two bingos. Have you finished bingo yet? Is that one no. thing that you're chasing? No. How many no. have you got to go? I've got about 10 to go, I think, and I'm just, I, I'm not chasing it. Okay. I, I, I'm just being serendipitous about it. 
Yeah, well, we discovered that Adam's already got his bingo and we don't know when that happened <laughs> because yeah. he didn't have it about six months ago and now he does. And it's like, damn it, he wasn't even trying. So wasn't even trying. This is what I think. I just, I'm going to look one day and all of a sudden it'll be done. Yes. Yeah. Possibly, possibly that's the, the happier way to do it, <laughs> just, just to discover um, that it's randomly occurred. So. But yeah, I knew it wasn't going to happen and I was like, oh, I'm not slowing myself down or, or trying to do breakneck speeds over the last 50 metres to make, make the timing. Because they're both at one end of the clock. Of course they are. About four seconds apart. So I was like, nah. Yeah. But that's all good. We'll get there uh, eventually. So had a great Where's morning. Is that the last one that you've got? Are you only look? Are I've you got one more time. No, no, I'm after two more times. Oh, two more times. They're close together. Yeah, yeah, yes. But I'll get there eventually. Mm. I'm sure. You will. And so a nice community at Baringa. I'm I'm going to make a Scotty Scotty style wild generalisation. Okay. Um, Mel, do you find that smaller park runs tend to have that closer knit community feel to it when you visit them? Yeah, um, I think I, w- I wouldn't say it's a size thing so much as it's a age thing in terms of the age of the event. So Baringa has been going now for approximately six months. So it's had time that, yes, they're still small in terms of numbers, but they've had time for those numbers to get to know each other and the event team to get to know each other. So I, I think it's uh, often often the case that, yeah, that any event needs just a little bit of time to get to know each other. The people like the community that need to get to know each other and you can still find that community in the bigger ones um, despite, despite the – potentially hundreds of people there like the community is still there in the bigger ones in my experience anyway it's just uh i definitely think it's an age thing and some some events you can feel that community from event number one not all events but some of them you can and that's that's got a lot to do with the event team you know how long it might have taken them to get to that point of launching the event because they, yep, that's a good point. Because yeah. they, yeah, if if they've struggled to either get funding or landholder permission, and it's been a long time in the works, but they've built up a good core team of people that are driving it, then that really helps as well. So, um, yeah. But to be honest, Lyndall, I've never been to a park run that hasn't got a great community feel about it. It's kind of part and parcel isn't it really with the whole park run shenanigans i think you're right mel i think it is but still the small the small numbers yeah i definitely enjoy the small numbers nambo is one of those events that has had you know less than 100 on average for a very long time which is fine but i think now their numbers are getting up there with a lot of extra adventures every week the fluffy factor The fluffy factor. You can't um, underestimate the fluffy factor. Howdy, park runners. It's Toff reporting in from the Grand Ridge Rail Trail Park Run. I'm here with Helen. And Helen, I'm not sure what that thing is you're wearing because I just don't get the ugly top bit. Why are you wearing an ugly top? I don't know. I just I think it's nice. It was Christmas, you know. Now it's just after Christmas in July, being August. I don't know. I just thought I'd bring it out again. <laughs> Fair enough. I think there's going to be quite a few of them around Australia today, and uh, possibly even one or two in the UK. Helen, what did you think of Grand Ridge? Oh, Grand Ridge is lovely. Beautiful track out and back, um, sheltered, so if it's windy or it's a bit wet, it's a lovely course. And I uh, hear a vicious rumour you're about to run back to Ballara, so what's it, another 13k <laughs> on top? Yeah, um, I'm actually doing New York Marathon this year. So oh, wow, one this of the is, majors. <laughs> yeah, so this is a bit of training, so yeah, nice trail downhill now. <laughs> oh, cool. Good luck with New York and... Uh, yeah, I'm slowly becoming accustomed to these tops. I still don't get it, but I'm becoming accustomed to them. Uh, have a great run at New York. Thank you, Tony. Cheers. All the best park runners.
And of course, talk was uh, at Grand Ridge Rail Trail where there was a sighting in the wild of the Christmas, the ugly Christmas singlet. I wore mine on the weekend, Lyndall. Did you get yours out? I know you've got one. I sure did. I had to attract Fluffy. <laughs> ah, see, I don't know whether or not they've used colour tests to see if he's attracted to people in particular running clothes. Yeah, I don't know. But who, who wouldn't be attracted to it? I know, right? <laughs> it's, it is a fashion statement by whomever wears it. And, um, yeah, we were so excited. We saw lots of people, some posted on uh, our original Facebook post, other people Instagrammed. Uh, I didn't check Twitter, actually. I probably should have checked that to see whether or not we had any um, showing their ugly Christmas singlets on Twitter. But lots of adventurers got the word from the pod or either on Facebook uh, last week and showed up. Christmas in August happened. Um, did you get any compliments on your shirt, Lyndall? The, um, yes. So Melissa from um, Nambour recognised the singlet and remarked that I was wearing my ugly Christmas singlet. Um, awesome. And I, look, I don't think I've ever worn it where I haven't got a compliment, to be honest. I'm not, I'm not just making that up. I, I get a lot, of, a lot of comments on the Christmas singlet when I pull it out. Oh, that's good. I didn't get a single one. So whether or not that was just because I was at the end of the field and the Baringa course, you don't – uh, like it is, it is sociable. I think more for the middle of the pack with the front of the pack. But if you're right at the back, a lot of those people have already um, moved off the shared sections of the course where they run back before you get there. So, oh, I maybe I just didn't give it the exposure that it deserved. That's probably what the problem was. Yeah, mm. it was good to to get it out though, and. Um, Test it out. It's it's been a few months since I was able to fit into it, so I am happy to report yeah. <laughs> that I was able to fit into it. Um, we don't know whether or not I I didn't see any Instagram posts from Scotty or a uh, Facebook posts from him. So whether or not Who that's knows? got anything to do with him being the former co-host of the Parkrun Adventurers, I don't know. Well, I don't know. I, I look, you know. Former co-host, current co-host, who can resist the singlet? I don't, I don't think that's it. Yeah. And, you know, who knows? He might only be the former co-host until next week. We'll he just might. have to wait and see. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> he might come out of retirement <laughs> and very quickly. And boot again. <laughs> <laughs> How has that been for you, the roller coaster ride that is being the sometimes co-host of the Parkrun Adventures <laughs> podcast, Lyndall? Is, is it really messing with your mental health? No, it's fine. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Good because you know, healthier and happier. That's that's what Park Run's all about. So, and that should extend to the Park Run Adventures podcast, I think too. Yeah, yeah. Look, I, I look. It's it's an honour and a and a fun time to be on the podcast. Um, I love doing my roving reports, and it's it's just as fun being the host or co-host. And um, you know, I don't mind the late call ups. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Noted for future reference. So now speaking of ugly Christmas singlets, we also put a poll on Facebook last week asking what people thought about the um, – well, obviously we haven't released a design yet, but we wanted to know – where people stood on their plans for the future design for 2019 in terms of um, what what did we actually ask? I can't even remember. I should go to Facebook and check what the poll says. <laughs> it says, are you going to be as cool as Will? I don't know who Will is, but presumably he's the dude wearing the singlet in the photo on the post. Yes, that's Will um, Barlow Will in the Barlow singlet on the post. Modelling the singlet very stylishly. Um, the question is, are you going to be as cool as Will and grab one for yourself if they're out again this year? Or do you prefer your Christmas secrets are uglier? Ah, yes. Yes, no. So they were the two options. The two yes. options, hell yes, count me in, I want to be like Will. The other option, I'm only buying one if they're uglier than ever. 
That's right, that's right. And we are happy to report that um, approximately two-thirds, 68% said, hell yeah, count me in. And 32% said, only if they're uglier. I was a little bit surprised by this, I have to say, Lyndall. And um, you wouldn't have seen, but in the early stages of the polling, um, only if they were uglier was very quickly out in front. So, hell yeah, count me in made a strong comeback, but it's the one. Yeah, and and I thought, oh, okay, I'd be interested to see, you know, what the demographics are that are voting for the only if they are uglier, and there's a lot of men in there saying they uglier the better. Yeah, they want their they want their singlets uglier, which I thought was interesting. Uh, I I think. I mean, there were there were certainly a whole bunch of women as well, but um, men were definitely in the majority. Um, so, obviously, on a whole, women thought the singlets in 2018 were ugly enough. Um, <laughs> still very encouraging to see so many people say, hell yeah, count me in, with, with especially when you consider the, the design itself is sight unseen. So, um, Absolutely. It's exciting, but that also means pressure that we, we have to do a good job. So, I mean, effectively though, there's no reason we can't make the singlets uglier. Um, well, it's a pretty attractive singlet now, so it's probably not that hard to make it uglier. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to see. Um, yeah, we'll have to start dusting off the design skills and get that going because it's not long until spring and spring no. is the season before Christmas. You know, so there's got to be somebody out there counting down the days till Christmas. I am not quite there yet, but I'm I'm a big fan. And we want to make sure that our friends in the UK and overseas have ample opportunity to order in time to receive theirs before Christmas this year. So it won't be too far away before we, we have the release anyway. Watch the space. Good news. Good news all round. Now, Lyndall, there's something else that I wanted to talk about. Um, a little bit spurred on by my situation last Saturday in that um, we – okay, so Baringa is only a 25-minute drive from my house, which Kiwana, my home park run, is 25 minutes drive from my house. So it's, <laughs> it's not like we don't do that every week. But I have to say we struggled – big time to get out of bed this week you know it, it was a combination of factors um I'd had a late night to start with on Friday night because for the for the week preceding Sunday I was um up late working on costumes for my family for the Sunshine Coast Marathon which happened on Sunday um which were spectacular might I add thank you thank you for those who haven't seen any pictures on Facebook or other social media or you know the media because um Sunshine <laughs> Coast media like to to see costumes at these sorts of events uh we went, my whole family, Team Obaka, we went as characters from The Wizard of Oz. So I was Dorothy, my husband was Tin Man, and our two little boys were the Scarecrow and the Cowardly Lion. And the the costumes took quite a bit of uh, work, especially the boys' costumes, because I made those ones from scratch. The other ones just needed to be altered. and. Um, yeah, so, so the boys' costumes took a lot of time. So I, I was staying up late a lot during the week and the sleep deprivation of having a two-month-old as well factored into that meant that my Saturday sleep was a cumulative of about three hours of broken <laughs> sleep. So I was struggling. I, I think I snoozed my alarm twice. Apparently Adam's alarm went off. I didn't even hear that one, but he turned it off, decided that if I didn't wake up, he wasn't going to wake me because I needed the sleep. And then I woke him. <laughs> and then I think we were playing a bit of getting out of bed chicken because I was sort of lying there waiting for him to be the first person to get up because once he gets up, I know it's going to happen. We have to go. And he was doing the same thing to me apparently. So it, we very nearly didn't go to Park Run again last Saturday, 
and Wes, um, he had to be woken up. So both the boys were asleep, which is another thing that never means, you know, you want to get up to wake the children. But Adam, I eventually said, okay, we have to get up. And I, because, you know, I have a, a podcast about uh, adventure to park runs and I haven't been on an adventure in ages and I cannot miss two weeks in a row. So thank, yes. thanks to this pod, I went to park run effectively. I didn't mention that where we were discussing it earlier, but yeah, it was a big struggle. But funnily enough, the only person in our house who who was absolutely super excited was Wes because I heard Adam go down to wake him up and, you know, he wakes up. It, it could go either way. He could either be really cranky when he wakes up or he can be a happy, normal, you know, yeah. <laughs> kind of good mood. And so Adam woke him up and he said, hey, Wes, do you want to go to park run? And I could hear it down the other end of the house. He goes, yes. And it was very <laughs> emphatic and very loud and zero hesitation. So it was like, oh. And I just giggled to myself because I was still in bed. <laughs> um, and I just thought, oh, well, I'm glad somebody wants to go to park run <laughs> because yeah. I'm tired. <laughs> but this leads me, and that was a very long introduction to where I was headed with this. So my apologies. <laughs> but it's a great story. Adventurers, adventurers get up at stupid o'clock repeatedly to go to new events um, that Nendies get further and further away the more you travel and the more you adventure. And so unless you travel the day before, it's, it's not uncommon to get up really early for park runs. I'm assuming you've had some early starts, yeah? I've had some early starts. What would be uh, your earliest start, do you think? So let me see. I did Dolby in a day. I drove out to Dolby on the morning of Dolby and it's probably a three-hour drive, say. Okay. So what so, time – are you one of those people who likes to be at the event, you know, an hour before it starts as oh, well no. when you're travelling? No. Oh, no. Not at that time of the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Sleep is I, too I try, precious. I, yeah, look, I try not to cut it too fine, um, but I try not to, you know – overestimate how long it's going to take and then be standing around for an hour. Um, so what I usually do is have a look on Google Maps and figure out how long it's going to take. And if it's going to take an hour 35, I say to myself, well, it's an hour 45 travel time. Okay. And so add a little bit more maybe. And pop so a buffer in. Yeah, just put a bit of buffer because, uh, yeah, so I'd probably, if it was a 135 drive, I'd want to leave somewhere between two hours and an hour 45. Okay, time. so you, you add your buffer and then you add like 15 minutes. You want to be at the yeah. event 15 minutes before it starts. I want it, so yeah. you don't miss the, the pre event brief and all that exactly. sort of thing. Okay. Exactly. So that, that's sort of my theory. I don't, and I, look, I don't get up early and, you know, blow dry my hair and make a three-course breakfast or any of that kind of stuff as well. I eat on the go. I pretty much get up and get dressed and go because, you know, the further you push back that getting up time, the harder it is to because the, then you've got to drive back, you know, so. Yeah, yep, this is true yeah. too. So I try to be very economical with my uh, getting up times. Have you ever had any um, instances where you just, you know, you you were going to travel somewhere further afield and it just wasn't going to happen? I'm sure I have, but I can't think of any. So because I also, I mean, I'm habitually a bit of a, you know, late decision maker. So I'll quite often decide on Friday night where I'm going on Saturday <laughs> Um, which probably isn't great. No, well, know. that's where we were last week, you know. You get, like, when you have an opportunity for a proper adventure and you, you've got all these options there, you, it's hard to decide sometimes where you want to go. Yeah. yeah. So, so, yeah, I think the ones that I've been really super committed to because I'm meeting someone or I need it for – the Dolby was an example of where I needed to get it in so that – because we'd already booked our flights to 
Melbourne to go and get gels for my last letter. Ah, um, okay. And you needed yeah, the D first. I needed the D first. So, um, you know, on those kinds of occasions where I've got something really hard and fast, I don't have trouble yeah. getting up. But um, but they've been in summer or spring or yeah, you know, winter. Winter whole... adds an extra factor, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> whole other thing. Yeah. Absolutely. And because I'll, I'll let so, you in on a bit of a secret. Baringa, 30, 25 minutes away, it was not actually where we were We were going to go. <laughs> we were yeah. going to go to an event an hour and a half away. So we had our alarms set for, oh, I think it was only for 4.30 or something like that. But this is this was part of the conversation that we had. When we decided that, like, when those alarms went off, we went, okay, we're not going to go to Parkrun in Brisbane, yeah. we will go to Baringa, which is much closer. And, uh, and I said, okay, yeah. we'll, we'll reset our alarms. What time are you resetting yours for? And Adam was only resetting his for like in half an hour. And I said, what do you mean? We just cut more than an hour off the drive. How is it that we only get another half an hour half sleep? An hour. <laughs> that ma- Even at this time of day, that maths doesn't add up. But I think because we had been snoozing and deliberating too long, it had all, you know, eaten into the amount of actual time we could get more sleep. So, yes. Yes. But it's always good to have a backup option, I guess, as well, isn't it? Yeah, that's true. Absolutely. That's that's being prepared as a parkrun adventurer. There's lots of perils to being an adventurer. Yes. Lack of sleep, not, not the least of them. Not the least of them. Sorry. Well, it's been another adventure having you on the podcast this week, Lyndall. Thank you uh, for co-hosting once again. You're very welcome, Mel. Thank you for thinking of me and having me back. Oh, only natural. <laughs> and who knows? We'll see whether or not Scotty wants to show his voice again next week. We'll see. We'll see. 